welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate. I am a boutique owner. I have an online store and a brick and mortar store here in Sarasota, Florida. I am in my new home office, guys. It's so cute. And hopefully this video is better quality than my last video. I apologize. That was like not great quality of a video, but I wasn't able to like refilm it since it was in the moment type of thing. But I retested it today and after some technical difficulties, we are back in business and I'm so excited to be filming on my new background. This is actually a wallpaper. And actually you guys, while I'm at it, I'll give you a home office tour. Um, but this is gonna be like a real life office tour because uh, it's not like, ever since I did it, I have like some things that I still need to organize and they're like out of the closet, literally. So um, I'll show it to you and then I'll get into what I wanna talk about today, which kind of ties in to being in a home office. We have a three bedroom home and this is like the third bedroom. We have our room and then the guest room and I wanted to make this an office. I am hoping that one day when I have a child and it is, <laughs> and we are still in this house, then I could reuse this wallpaper and it will be a girl. So let's just hope. But um, to start off, I've got some Cricut stuff on the floor because I'm gonna make t-shirts for my staff and that's just kind of out and about. My dogs are in here. I also have this clothing rack in here um, because when I take some clothes home to do photo shoots in, it's convenient to hang it up. And also occasionally I do live sales at home. So I will do it right here. And then a cute little mirror. It's cute for trying. Um, and then we have a window here, a little bookshelf, and then this is where it kind of gets messy over here. Um, I've got my ring light and then I have to organize in that closet still. Um, and then I hang my vision board there. I've got a Hello Gorgeous sign. I like to hang my vision board because it does look a little bit like sloppy, so like I don't wanna hang it like right on the wall, but this door is open the majority of the time and they always say to keep your vision board in a place where you can always see it. Um, I definitely got these two things from Home Goods at some point. Um, and then that's a real plant right there. This wallpaper is from Etsy. I am so obsessed with it. So I wallpapered this wall right here. What I wanted to talk to you guys today about is basically the pros and cons of being online only. Um, and basically working in your house versus in a warehouse or an office space. Um, the pros and cons of being a mobile boutique and also the pros and cons of having a brick and mortar store. There's literally so many pros and cons of each of these, <laughs> each of these little things, but I'm just gonna talk about my personal experience of that. I did talk about like the full journey of how we got, it start got started with our boutique and everything like that in probably my first video on this channel. So if you want like the full story of how my, mo my mom and I got started, with our boutique and everything we went through on the way. Um, you can watch that video. First thing that we did when we first started our boutique is it was online and it was in our house, which I literally suggest that to every single person wanting to start a boutique. Even if like you're like, oh, I don't want a boutique unless I have a store, I would still start online because you have to know that you love it before you really start like getting into like getting into the financials and like the um, investment of a brick and mortar because obviously that's more expensive. The pros and cons for me of working in our home um, online are this. Okay, sorry guys, I shifted the camera a little bit because I felt like there was a bit of a glare over there. But anyways, um, first and foremost, I feel like the biggest uh, pro, the biggest pro um, from working out of your house and being online only is the fact that you essentially have no overhead, which is gonna keep your costs so low. So essentially anything you profit from um, on any sale, you can put back in your business or put in your pocket, which is so freaking nice. One of the cons for me from working from home um, and having like this business out of your home is the fact that I never felt legit. And um, I feel like post 2020 COVID world, a lot of people have been sharing the fact that they run a business from outside of their home. A lot of people are working from home. So I feel like now maybe wouldn't be as much um, thinking that you know, you're know you not legit or anything like that if you're just working from home. But definitely back then, I felt like I was not like a real business because I didn't have a real like warehouse or store or office space and that we couldn't afford to 
go anywhere else when that wasn't really the truth. The truth was that that was just like what was working for us at the time. And to be quite honest with you, if that was going to work for us right now and I somehow made more money from that, of course I'd want to only work from home. That would be amazing. Then I wouldn't have to leave my house literally ever. <laughs> I'm such a homebody. I would love it. Um, however, one of the other cons of staying at home and running your business in your house is that the stuff gets everywhere and your partner or whoever lives with you might get kind of annoyed with inventory everywhere. Like I know when I would get boxes of shipments in, I would like take it into the living room and like watch TV and like go through it and stuff. And Cody would just be like, can you like take this into the other room? Like it is ruining the vibe, which it totally was. But obviously he was understanding at the time and I was like, it's not gonna like gonna be like this forever. So definitely one of the cons is it just taking over your house was essentially, which is why essentially we had to move it out of our house. Um, another like con could be if you really do need help and let's say you have like a full-time job still and you're running it through like from your house and then you want to hire an employee to help ship or help do whatever because you're super overwhelmed I guess it could be a little bit more awkward like bringing in an, um, an employee that you don't know into your house to ship orders and stuff like that versus a neutral space like an office or a warehouse but um, if you could hire anybody that you know or just wants to do this at the job on the side um, that you kind of already know personally, then it maybe won't be as awkward. But I do know that was one of my things. It's like I really wanted to hire somebody to help model and stuff like that at the time, but I just felt like so awkward having them come to our house. So I never ended up doing it. Anyways, the biggest pro from working from home is obviously cost. The biggest con, in my opinion, is it taking over your house and then like the legitimacy and trust that people have in your business because you're working from home. But again, I think that has changed ever since 2020. More people are working from home and running their businesses through home. And since um, TikTok blew up and everyone shows their at-home businesses, I really feel like it's not that big of a deal anymore. It's just about like the space and everything like that. But if you could run, if you, listen to me, if you could run a profitable business and you are able to quit your job from working in your house do not think that you need to grow outside of your house just to be legit because I promise you I have been to all different stages of this of this boutique world and I promise you you, you're winning, you're winning. Okay, so moving on to the next step of my boutique journey and the pros and cons of that is having a mobile boutique. And so mobile boutique could mean a various different amount of things. It can mean a trailer, a fashion truck, it can mean just doing pop-ups like at people's houses or doing pop-ups in tents at local market. For us, um, once we got over that first hump of like, getting our business set up online and having all of our family and friends um, buy from us and then realizing, wow, it's actually harder to get sales than you may have thought. We had to think out of outside of the box and we had to sign up for some local markets and some local events and try to get our name out there, um, which meant doing mobile pop-up shows. So that might be at your local farmer's market. It might be at like a convention where they have like kind of like shopping shows and stuff like that. They do them a lot around the holidays and things like that. I know I did the Southern Women show, I think it was called. Um, I did, I'm trying to think of one of the other ones. I did the Pinterest conference in um, Georgia, but in these you can basically just go and like set up a little 10 by 10 space with um, racks and like a little checkout counter and stuff like that. However, the thing that we didn't know about these is A, that they could get really expensive. Like even if you're just buying like a 10 by 10 space, like we've paid up to like a thousand dollars just for like a three day event, which is absolutely insane to me because a lot of people have rent for their brick and mortar stores that are less than that. So the events could tend to be expensive and you guys, they are so much hard work to set up. Like seriously, my mom and I would hustle our little booties off. We would fill two cars up. So we had like two Jeep Cherokees. And so they were like bigger cars, but not like really big. We would fill two Jeep Cherokees up and we would do like three trips each, like six car loads of stuff there and then six car loads of stuff back once the show was over. And sometimes we paid like, I don't know, $300 for the event and we would literally make $300 in sales for like one day and that was with like literally three hours of setup probably more five hours set up and like three hours of taking down. So, and then like a 10 hour day. So really a lot of the events were not worth it. I mean, I honestly couldn't really count how many events were actually profitable for us. But again, that was just our experience. Like in some 
higher end like cities that we were in like we did it in Jacksonville and in Sarasota and if you're like from a smaller town um maybe the events like wouldn't cost as much money maybe you have like other people to like help set up but for us I feel like it just like wasn't profiting a lot at all but we kept saying like oh we'll just keep doing them to get our name out there and then we were like let's think of a way to like make this easier for us so we found out that there was something called a fashion truck um so a lot of people will buy like old like ups trucks or something like that and they will literally completely redo them like wrap them from the outside so that your logo and everything is on the outside and then inside you like install clothing racks and shelves and everything like that and then that way you could just keep all of your inventory in there and then when you have an event that you go to you literally just <laughs> go in the truck and then you park it there and then your event is already set up at least it I thought it was gonna be that simple but it really wasn't and I would just like to preface this whole experience with this was my experience I know so many boutique owners out there who literally kill it being mobile boutique owners but I don't think that's the case for literally every single person and it was like one of the failures I would say I wouldn't call it like a failure just like something that I learned from while we had our business so again like don't take this like if you're trying to open a mobile boutique like I'm just trying to tell you things to think of not just like telling you not to do it because I feel like again everything is a learning experience and like in the long run I'm glad we did it I guess but I would not do it again anywho so I really wanted to get a fashion truck and so my mom and I like flew all the way to Memphis Tennessee where there was a fashion truck for sale and we were going to purchase it and I can't remember like the details of what exactly happened but basically we met with this guy and we were like yeah like we'll take the fashion truck we gave it a little test drive and it was a little bit scary because it was like I forget what kind of truck it was like an old UPS truck or something like that and my mom was like oh my god like I feel so uncomfortable driving this right now um but you know we local events I feel like she said like she wouldn't be like afraid to drive it like locally around but like the fact that we had to drive it from Memphis Tennessee all the way back to Sarasota Florida um it was going to be like a long trip and she was just like so nervous that you know it was gonna break down or that like she just like couldn't like drive it safely and so um she was like really hesitant about it but obviously that's what we went there to buy and we were like okay like we're gonna buy it and then the last second, which this is like literally God intervening <laughs> and um, kind of was like a huge blessing in disguise, even though at the time I was so pissed, but we went to buy it and we um, went to call our bank and ask them if they could like transfer the money over. And apparently our bank said that we couldn't transfer it to, I don't know what the case was. I don't know if it was like too late or if it was gonna take like three days to transfer it or something like that. Um, it was something weird and it was gonna be like too late by the time they transferred it. I cannot remember the whole story, but it was something like that and then it was almost just kind of like, well, we're not gonna stay here for three days while we wait for the transfers, so we're just gonna go home, I guess. Um, so at the time, I was like really disappointed, but in the long run, it was definitely <laughs> what was meant to be because I'm glad we didn't get that fashion truck. Um, just because after test driving it, I was like, wow, I wish there was something that we can drive like a normal car, but still have like the big back. So that's when we thought about the idea of getting a trailer. So we essentially bought a trailer after that and then we had to buy a new car because um, the car that we had, the Jeep Cherokee was too small to tow the trailer. So we ended up buying a Land Rover, like a, it was a used Land Rover um, and it was like a big car, but honestly the Land Rover had so many issues and then um, the trailer was brand new, so that was nice. However, if you've ever driven a trailer before, you know how hard it is to back them up. Like literally it is so hard and you might be watching this like, having driven trailers your whole life or something and you're like oh girl it's not that hard but for someone who literally grew up in a small town now lives in more of a city and now has to drive a trailer places and like back it up it's really scary it was really scary for us um and then it was that that was scary it was the fact that we had to like set up generators for um when we would set up like the events it was also the fact that when you're driving on a highway um and again you wouldn't really know this unless you did drive 
with something like an RV or a trailer or something in the back but if you go too fast sometimes the wind can catch you and it like goes like this and it is terrifying um so that's just something that we felt so so uncomfortable with and um I didn't feel comfortable driving it she didn't feel comfortable driving it and it was just like the two of us trying to get places and we ended up driving it I, like I said to Atlanta the one time for the pinners conference um, I don't know if I said that and it was just like so stressful the whole entire time when you get to a hotel you have to make sure that you could park it somewhere at the hotel there's just so many different things to think about and I think by the time we ended up getting the whole inside redone the whole outside of it wrapped it was like several months to a year before we got it all done and again something like that could be done in like a few weekends if you really put your mind to it or have the right resources but for us like we were still trying to run our online business and everything like that and um, I think at the time that we ended up getting it all renovated and whatnot we were actually in our first storefront as well so I think we got the storefront by the in between the time we actually bought the trailer and by the time we actually got it like completely redone, we had like got the store in the middle of that time, I guess you could say. So we ended up doing maybe two events with the trailer by the time we actually got it all finished. And by that time we were like, honestly, we hate this so much because it gives us so much anxiety like driving it. And if you know me personally and you followed my journey, I have really bad panic attacks or like I used to have really bad panic attacks. Like at the time it was happening and it all stemmed from driving. So, and it didn't stem from driving the trailer, it was started before that, but it all stemmed from driving. And so I was essentially not even able to drive the trailer and then it would just give me anxiety being in the car. So again, if you're someone who is like, I wanna do a trailer and I don't think it would give me anxiety and I know how to back those things up and I know how to control them or you have someone to drive them, like by all means, you go for it. Like it could be a really great thing if you don't wanna have like a storefront, um, but you need some extra room like outside of your house or you need some extra help with sales so you do pop-up shops like it is a little bit easier to set up pop-up shops with trailers or fashion trucks versus like setting up from with a tent and all that stuff but to be quite honest um, it still is a lot of setup once you get there because you have to like um, pin down all the clothes with you know bungees and stuff like that or at least that's what we did so that they didn't fall off like in transit so there is still setup involved in it and you also need to get like, or you should get like an air conditioning unit in the trailer or truck. Um, so it's just a little things to think about like that. And just the whole thing just gave us so much anxiety. And we were so lucky that somebody um, in the boutique hub, which if you're not a part of the boutique hub, you gotta join the boutique hub. Uh, somebody in the boutique hub was looking to buy a trailer at the time. And it was a super easy like transaction where they just bought the trailer off of us and our branding on it kind of matched theirs. And they were able to just put their logo over ours and it turned out so good for them, so good for us. So like I said, no harm done. I think we literally broke even on the trailer by the time we put in all uh, like bought it put in all of the work to it and then sold it I think we broke even so it wasn't like a big big deal but we decided that we will not be doing that anymore and that we were just going to focus on our storefront slash online so like I said in between having the trailer we got our first um, storefront and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the process of getting a storefront and then like the pros and cons of each type of like store or like each like location of a storefront and just everything that go into it different pros and cons of both the storefronts I've had and then the comparison of storefront versus warehouse if that all makes sense there's so many moving parts here but um before we got our first storefront I wanted one so bad and we had looked at multiple storefronts um like I said we started our kind of journey off in Jacksonville and I had looked at many there and one of the big cons of having a storefront is the fact that a lot of commercial spaces want you to sign like a five, seven, ten year lease, which if you're first starting out and you haven't even been in business for five years, signing a five year lease is really freaking scary. So I really don't advise you to do that unless you have already been in business for a decent amount of time. And we just like weren't at the time and we were going to take the chance and like do it to be honest with you. But um, this is just a little bit of insight of what it takes to rent a space, what to look like 
what to look at when looking at spaces. So the first thing I did was I went to LoopNet. Um, so it's like LoopNet.com or like there's a LoopNet app. It's basically a real estate app for commercial, just like how you would look at Zillow for houses. Um, I know there's a lot of commercial spaces that aren't on LoopNet, but it is a place to start. Um, if you're really, really looking for something specific and you need help, there are commercial real estate agents as well that can help you um, just lease a building. You don't have to actually like, you know, buy anything like that if you're using a real estate agent. Um, but one thing that we looked at, obviously, you wanna look at the square footage and the price per square foot. So what you do is you um, take the price per square foot and you, let's just say it's $10 per square foot times 2,000 square feet. And you're gonna wanna times that number and that's gonna be what you're paying for the year. Um, and then so if you wanna look at that as rently month, as rently month, oh my God, rently month? As monthly rent. If you wanna look at that as monthly rent, you're going to divide that by 12 and then that'll give you what your monthly rent is going to be. So um, anyways, as we were looking at spaces and everything like that, we did find a storefront. Um, this is way back before we got mobile, way back before we got our first storefront. And I remember we met with the real estate agent who was kind of showing the space and um, basically he asked for our financial records, a business plan, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and unfortunately, we were a very young business and we didn't really have a good financial track record because we were only open for like three months and our sales were not a lot. We also like didn't really have, like we put together a business plan and yeah, I'm sure it's fine, but without an actual like history of sales to back us up, it doesn't really mean too much. So we unfortunately didn't get that space because um, somebody who had been in business for over 10 years had also wanted that space and they were obviously going to pick the person um, that had 10 years of financial data and a legit business plan over us. However, that is not always the case. This was like a very like rare find um, as far as like commercial spaces went. And again, in the long run, I'm so, so glad that that didn't go through because we ended up moving out of Jacksonville to Sarasota so that I can live closer to Cody. And that was obviously like the best move. Um, but at the time it was really disappointing. But I will say that if you are trying to look for a storefront, you just wanna like dabble into it. There's no harm in like reaching out to a place that you might wanna look at and just looking at it. Like, I mean, just like if you were like kind of looking at like a car or a house and like maybe you aren't really able to afford it yet, but you just kind of wanna check it out to see what you could afford in the future, um, there's no harm in doing that. So um, when we moved to Sarasota, we found um, the storefront that we had first moved into. And when we looked at it, I was like, okay, this is like a cute, cute little area, I guess. It was a little bit run down, but I thought it was like kind of a cute, safe space. Um, and it was, I think, 1,200 square foot maybe. I think it was like 1,200 square foot. And um, we saw it, it needed a lot of work inside too, like the floors needed to be redone, the dressing rooms would need to be built out, but it was a really cheap rent cost, especially because our sales weren't too much. And um, basically with this rent cost, we were able to pay that rent um, with our current online sales. So we weren't too afraid to lease it. And it was also a three year lease, which was still very scary at the time but three years is not as bad as five. <laughs> if it was five, we'd still be there. Three years did fly by and um, we were successful in that space. All I know is that that place did not ask for nearly as much as that first place that we were looking at. So um, even with not like a huge like financial data record, cause I think we had only been open for like six months or something at the time, or maybe closer to a year, but still it wasn't a lot. Um, but. I'm not sure what they asked for, to be completely honest with you, I don't remember, but um, I definitely think they would have taken like any new business because while we were in that complex, there were multiple like brand new businesses that were not online before or anything like that. So you don't have to like have a huge like background of um, own, like a huge like history of owning a business in order to rent a place. Um, I just think it depends on the place and how competitive it is. Um, so the pros and cons of that space, which is basically a storefront that was um, not in a good location. So while we had customers come in and out, 
it was not like people were coming in all day every day like honestly there were some days that two people would walk in the door all day long there were many days that we got zero zero dollars in sales all day long in the store like m many days we got like zero dollar days in the store um but that's just because like we didn't we weren't in a primary location and there were so many people locally who even shop with us online but and were like l very loyal online customers but they would still never come into the store and it's just because we weren't like in their mind when they were like out and about because we were like kind of out of the way and they weren't like coming near us for any reason unless they had lived near us. Like a lot of the customers that we had um, kind of just like lived in neighborhoods like around us or they like went out to eat at one of the restaurants like in that little complex there but it seriously did not bring in a lot of foot traffic and we were really able to focus on growing our online business while we were in that location. Um, so that was really nice because the rent was so low yet we were out of our house yet we looked like we were in like professional space so it was really nice but the one huge con of being in that location and doing what we were doing was that i was so focused on doing our online that when a customer would walk in i would like basically have to stop working and just kind of like stare at them until they left because they weren't going to buy anything and i've had so many people come in and be like i'm not buying anything i'm just wasting time and i'm like yeah, you're wasting my time too. But you know, you have to be nice and you never know they might buy something. So um, that was a huge con of being in that space. But one of the pros of being in that space was that they kind of let us um, make our own hours. So it wasn't like we had to be open Monday through Saturday from 10 to eight or something like that, like we do at the mall right now, um, which I'll get to. But um, that was really nice about that space. And once COVID started, we actually moved, or we actually stayed in that space because we were still within our lease period. We were still able to afford our rent and everything like that. Um, but they didn't make us stay open so we had to close during covid and we kept working out of that space if that makes sense so we kept doing our live sales we keep shipping out of there we kept you know making all of our content out of there like we still went to work there every day but the doors were closed to the public and it was like our sales went up immediately because we were able to focus on what actually worked for us which was our online sales so then we ended up moving into our warehouse once the lease was over in that space um and i wanted to just go f fully back to being online since it was working so well for us but one of the cons of having a warehouse space or finding a warehouse space was that some of them were so big like so big and i didn't need that i wanted i think what did i want like 2000 square foot i think we went from 1200 to 2000 square foot i want to say i could be a little bit wrong but i'm pretty sure that's what it was and we were looking at some spaces and some of them had like 10,000 square foot and it's like you don't need that much and so um i mean maybe you do but i didn't need that much it was like that would be for a huge business or like something that's some business that sold like huge items or whatever um another thing that was hard to look for as far as warehouse spaces went was whether it was air conditioning or not. So obviously it was essential for it to be air conditioning for air conditioned for us. Um, we knew we wanted to hire staff once we got in there and we obviously weren't gonna hire, like people weren't gonna come work for us if we didn't have air conditioning. We live in Florida, so that'd be crazy. Um, so we got one that was air conditioned, but one of the cons to that is that it's very expensive to keep the air conditioning on. So every time we left, we had to like turn it up and make sure it wasn't like running all night long. Um, another like con to having like a warehouse would be like mice or rats or something like that, which is something I was so worried about. Thankfully, it did not happen to us. We had a really nice warehouse space and one of my friends actually ended up taking over the warehouse space. She has a boutique um, once we moved out of it. And so I was so happy I was able to sublet it to somebody else that really deserved it because that place is freaking awesome. And I would like love to be in there, but our storefront's just working so well for us right now. Um, but yeah, we really thought we were gonna keep our online store running out of there. Um, it was really great to have the office. It was really great to have a separate photo room you just get so much space with the warehouse it is so nice but one of the cons was that you know you're only online and now you have this big warehouse space that you've got to pay the rent for and although it wasn't too too much 
more than our other rent. It was still enough that it was like we have no additional income coming from any type of storefront at all. I really liked it. I really liked all of the um, space, but I would definitely say unless you are bursting at the seams in your house or your smaller office space and you have consistent high sales, I would say don't go into our house space until you know you like need it, need it. Um, so yeah, so basically the reason why I got the storefront in the mall was was not because we were doing bad like honestly we were doing really good we were launching like really awesome collections um I had a girl modeling for us that was like working there all like week with us essentially and it was just so so good I loved it so much um but I randomly had this itch to like open a storefront for the holidays and what I thought the thought in my mind was to open a storefront for three months in the mall do a little pop up <laughs> um and then you know if it worked out well we would extend it but after talking to the people at the mall they said you know you should open it for at least a year because um other people want this space it's a really good space which it was it was such a good space it was the Louis Vuitton store and I was like okay like I guess we could do a year because a year with that amount of rent that we're paying now is still scary it's still a lot of money on the table but one year is a lot less scarier than three years, five years, 10 years, whatever. So I was like, screw it, we're freaking doing it. And that's when we decided, basically, we didn't decide immediately to get rid of the warehouse, but once I realized how big the storefront was and how big our stock room was, I was like, if I'm really gonna be a smart business person right now, like we have to get rid of the warehouse and we have to just run everything out of our storefront. God, am I happy I made that decision when I did because it has been the biggest freaking blessing. Um, it has taken so much off of my shoulders because of the employees that we hired. And I'm gonna say right now that having a storefront, one of the biggest pros and one of the biggest cons are employees. And I will say that because it is really hard to hire the right people. Um, being a boutique in a boutique like setting i feel like there's always drama because we're all girls and it's just gonna happen and you're the one that has to take care of it and it's just something that i don't want to freaking deal with but like it is my job so i have to um so that is like a really hard part of having a storefront because you're basically um relying on these people but that's also the biggest pro to having it too is like these people are like not doing my job because I like still do all of like the you know social media a lot of like the over you know I oversee like everything I still take all the pictures I still like do customer service I still do a lot of things right now but they're shipping all the orders they're unpackaging and tagging and inspecting all the new merchandise they're cleaning the store they are like helping with the customers so that is a huge huge pro and they also make make my life so easy and right now we have a really good team and i'm so freaking grateful um but it could be it could be really great and it could be really bad so <laughs> i've had both situations over the years and um over this past year even and um it's been really really great so i'm really thankful but again that is a huge thing to think about because now um if you are going to be open for like a lot of hours you have to realize that like you can't be there for all those hours you will literally go insane so just be prepared to handle employees and having to hire fire do all that fun stuff um not that firing is fun it is not fun but anyways okay so that is a big pro and a big con um another con is theft i might get into that in another video but let's just say another con is theft <laughs> um another con is a lot of rent and i'm saying this now from my experience in this store versus my last one this one is a high foot traffic area so one of the pros of being in a high foot traffic area is that you're having customers in and out all day and without doing much marketing you are able for these people to come in and out of your store all day so in a way the rent is obviously a huge con because it is a huge expense employees are a huge expense but on the same hand you don't have to spend much in marketing if there's people walking past your store all day every day the biggest thing that i've had to spend money on is um making sure our front windows which is in my last video look amazing because you want as many people walking by to come in as possible so that is been um that's again another pro and a con for the um high traffic um 
or high foot traffic um, storefront. Another um, pro is that it's really fun to buy merchandise, buy decor, merchandise it, um, and know that like people like love the stuff that you are bringing to the table because the sales are there to prove it. And that is a huge like pro. That's like what we're here for. So it makes me really, really happy. Um, a con is going to be that um, kind of like the same thing. Like you have to buy a lot more clothes. You have to buy, you have to work on merchandising and cleaning the store a lot more because there's so many people in and out all day. So that is something that I've had to get used to and I've never had to do before. And it's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. Um, and so, like I said, having the employees and now I'm at like a spot where I've been home all day and I know that I don't have to worry about what's going on there because I know they've got it and they've got my back and they're doing a great job. So that is another really big pro. So, so there's just so much to consider. Um, I would kind of consider like your long-term goals. What's going to get you to your long-term goals and what are the stepping stones to that? If you want to have 10 storefronts, then go out and get a storefront as soon as you can. If you don't ha want to have any storefronts at all and your long-term goal is to just work from home and be able to travel with your family, don't get a storefront. Even if you think it's going to give you the, a step up like for like a short period of time, don't do it because unless like your head and like your heart, if, if that's where you want to be is in it, then you're not going to want to do it every single day because because even if it's just a year, a year is a long ass time and believe me, you are going to want to quit <laughs> when the going gets rough. One other thing I wanted to mention too. So when I was leasing the storefront at the mall, um, they did want our financial history and I believe they wanted a business plan as well. But at that point we had been open for four years and we had the financial data to back it up. We had like the local following to back it up, um, everything like that. Like they wanted our social media channels and everything. So um, it really, it was a full circle moment when it's like we got turned down for like a really much smaller space. Um, than this big one that we got and we were actually picked over another store um, who also wanted the space as well. So that was a great full circle moment for us. Overall, like that is my pros and cons of each stage of what we were in. Like I said, I've done it literally all. Um, and there have been so many ups and downs. So if you have any specific questions for me, definitely definitely let me know. Um, and I hope I also answered the question about why we were so anxious about the trailer again all my experience so please um go to somebody who's more has a more positive experience with the trailer if you're looking for some encouragement but i'm just trying to be real with my experience and then um i hope i answered somebody's question about like leasing a storefront and stuff like that because yeah i know that could be like a scary like thing if you have no idea what you're doing i hope this video helped you guys out and i will see you guys next time be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more bye guys